What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and uh, the Mustang runs. So in the last video, if you guys didn't see that, we got this thing running basically off the push button start by converting the factory ECU, reprogramming the factory automatic ECU to a, uh, to to a manual ECU and then jumping the clutch pedal position switch, which goes to the body control module, which allows everything to just start and run. Um, and kind of how I was able to do that and to get it to turn on the fuel pump and do that type of stuff was because of this crank position sensor right here. So I went ahead and made this super, super simple bracket just as quick as I could just to test this out and uh, basically have the factory EcoBoost engine harness right here plugged in, laid out, and literally the only thing plugged in, crank position sensor. So um, the goal of today is we're gonna actually weld this thing back on uh, so or weld it on fully I might take it on so it's a little bit prettier uh, weld this on to this actual pulley make a really nice bracket right here because this is that I don't even think you guys understand how essential that part of the operation is right there and uh, and then deloom this harness and basically delete everything so like this is the the basically the throttle body this is all the direct injection stuff um, coils all that stuff basically we're gonna delete as much of that as we possibly can out of it. Uh, as long as we have those wires going to that. Uh, there's a couple other sensors on the engine. So right here we have a coolant temp sensor. Uh, that'll go to the factory gauge cluster. Uh, on this side of the engine we have, this is a cylinder head temperature thing, which isn't necessarily a, uh, a coolant temperature, but it's a cylinder head temperature thing. So that kind of reads the basically the, the temperature of the head right there, just straight into the aluminum. Um, what else can we do? There's an oil pressure sensor. It's not an actual, I don't think it actually gives like a reading of like zero to 80 PSI, but it'll actually give it a reading of like low oil pressure or good oil pressure. Uh, the other thing that's kind of interesting is in the factory intercooler, there is a uh, boost pressure sensor, basically like a boost reference right there. So. I'll probably run a vacuum line to that, and that actually goes into the car. So, or it might go to the intake manifold. I'm not 100% sure yet. But, uh, so there's a factory boost gauge in the gauge cluster, which is cool. And then there's also a factory wideband that hooks up to the, the gauge cluster, or that ties into the gauge cluster with this wire right here. So I could hook up boost gauge, wideband, coolant temp, oil pressure, all that type of stuff. I mean, those are pretty much the essentials and the tachometer to the factory gauge cluster, which is super sick. Speed hopefully off the diff. And hopefully or, the speedometer goes off the diff. That's that's kind of what we're uh, what we're kind of hoping. David was kind of probing around with some stuff in the transmission thing the other day, and the speedo speedometer did rise a little bit. But supposedly, speed goes off of like the ABS modules and like the wheel speed sensors. Mm -hmm. I hope. Um, so yeah, that's uh, kind of the goals for this video is to try to get all that stuff kind of plumbed up and actually working, get some gauges working in the car, uh, get this thing on there a little bit better. But uh, I guess we're going to start it. All right guys, so I got the whole harness basically dissected and uh, check this out. So this is everything that I pulled out of the harness and this is everything that is left in the harness. So right here, there's a couple wires that are kind of tied together because they share a common, basically like a voltage. So I'm assuming these are both coolant temp sensors. So I'm assuming they either, they probably share like a five volt or something. Uh, this is the wideband. This one has the most wires out of everything. You can see, and then you can see where there's all these little junctions where it kind of was sharing a, a voltage signal or like a ground or something with uh, with other sensors. Basically got all that stuff cut off. Uh, right here, this is a plug that kind of goes to the fuse box. This was 12 volts pretty much to the injectors. And I'm assuming this is probably either 12 volts or a 5 volt signal. Well, it's probably 12 volts because it goes to right there. Or it could be a 5 volt too, but uh, that goes to the wideband as well. And then you can see it has some wires that go up into the ECU and that's where it kind of dissects its, uh, its whole wideband information. So um, cylinder head temp, coolant temp, oil pressure, crank signal, 
and wideband. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tie this actually into my factory fuse box. I might have this like turn trigger a relay or something or see how many, um, you know, this wire was pretty much running a lot of the stuff, all the coils and stuff for the engine. So it might be all right kind of powering my whole setup, but maybe not. It might need a little bit more, more, uh, more voltage than that. But uh, kind of the idea is you could see here's the crank position sensor. You could see how it was tied into a couple little junctions like that. So I'm not going to leave that stuff in here. Kind of the plan is, is I'll pull the wire kind of short and I'll label each wire and cut it on probably just one end of it. And, uh, and then actually lay it in the engine bay and get the actual length to it and then kind of make my own little loom with it all clean and, and kind of tidied up. So that's kind of the plan for that. Uh, it is pretty late. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and head home for the night. Come back, come back and we'll get this figured out tomorrow. Alright guys, so Dave came over for a little bit and he went ahead and depinned this whole little harness so we don't have like 300 little guys hanging out of there. You can see these were all the guys that I that basically cut off just so they're out of the way and then he went ahead and pulled them out. So um, yeah, uh, this right here is a 12 volts switched ignition on a relay for the ignition coil so I just ran it to this real quick. This is basically powering the whole JZ in certain aspects so we'll see if that uh, can handle it. Um, and the other thing is, is I just made this little bracket down there. So hopefully you can see that's kind of where the crank position sensor I think is going to mount. I'm going to mount it to the, the thing. Just kind of a weird thing. I'd have to make like a weird little bracket to kind of come out and over and, uh, and try not to hit anything with it. So I figured I'm going to give this a try. So I went ahead and just clamped it there for now just to see if the distance I have is close enough to actually actuate the tachometer. Um, other than that, everything else is all hooked up how it should be. Uh, we have a ground going to this guy right there. So, I guess uh, there's nothing else to do but hop in the car and see if it starts. Alright, so I put a, uh, a little spacer in between there. So we're going to see if it likes that, because the tack wasn't working. Alright, so we got tachometer. Pulling temp isn't, uh, maybe just because it's not grounded. What do you think, dude? What do you think it's going to do when you go past 6,000? I don't know. There it is, Dave. She works. She starts and stops 100% with the key. So I guess the only thing I need to do to get the... Uh, some people were saying in the comments that if it has like any check engine lights at all, it won't remote start. Uh, and I did have this latch down yesterday. I basically just pushed it down just so that it thinks that the hood is closed. Um, yeah, if I go into the HP tuners, I could actually select all the current check engine lights and just delete them so that it doesn't register a check engine light. And then the remote start should work. So how how cool would that be, Dave? Remote start? All right. Jay-Z? Mustang? It's not bad. So that was actually, I just basically put a super small shim under that and that was actually enough to give it uh, the rpm signal so then as soon as it starts the first time it started because it gives it like a prime pulse of fuel and then the second time it was able to actually keep running because it continues since it has an rpm signal it continues to run the fuel pump so uh, now i just need to lay out this harness you can see got a bunch of extra length right here and you can see there's just a bunch of extra length for everything so basically you just need to put the sensors kind of where they're going to be on the car and then cut the wires, shorten them a little bit, and then actually kind of give, give themselves a, a loom. We should be good. I got that thing bolted down on there. So that, that's my crank position sensor for the, for the 2J or the EcoBeast 2J, whatever you want to call it. So uh, now I just need to put some better welds on it. You can see those ones are just kind of, kind of meh for now. Just, that was basically just a test, just in case uh, it didn't work or if it was like super wobbly or whatever, I could just kind of knock off the tacks and like restart or just, you know, kind of cancel the whole idea. But everything worked. I just tested it in the car and it fired right up again. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that little bracket off, paint it black, and then pull off this pulley. 
and actually uh, weld that on fully so that I could get that just bolted on the engine and not have to worry about it anymore. All right, so I got this thing all welded. You can see I got like a really nice weld right there. This was kind of a booger and it welded over to the aluminum because this centerpiece is actually aluminum and the only metal or like steel is actually just that little lip and there's a little piece of rubber kind of, uh, kind of separating it all. So I actually TIG welded it and didn't end up using very much filler at all. Just kind of TIGged it on uh, each side of the thing. So uh, I'm gonna throw a coat of, uh, of paint on this as well as that bracket. Uh, down there for that thing. We should be solid as far as that stuff goes. I'm still waiting on basically a ribbed pulley right here that's going to convert and delete the AC and, and, um, and power steering stuff. So uh, it'll basically just have these four pulleys. It'll just be kind of square. So I was using this to kind of wrap it around there to make sure that I wasn't going to actually hit the crank position sensor uh, when I was making the bracket. So uh, just to kind of get an idea for that. So yeah, I'm going to do that and then I have some drive shaft stuff that actually showed up, so I'm pretty excited about that. Messing with this whole little crank position sensor thing again, I really, I mean, I, I this would work, and I basically spent the last hour trying to get it to actually mount to the engine. Uh, so right here's where the AC and everything was. I kind of cut out this bracket, put some spacers there, and was kind of trying to figure out a good way. But the bad thing is, is there's just so much stuff here in the way. So we have the sway bar that's in the way, which if the sway bar wasn't here, we wouldn't really have any issues. But so I could basically weld something here, but then this pulley right here, I don't actually have uh, the kit that I ordered yet. So I'm not sure how far this goes in. So when the tensioner goes in, this either goes right there or right here. And so I can't really figure it out right now. So for right now, I'm gonna leave it right here. But before the road trip, I would like to actually mount it on the engine. I was just thinking about it and I just really think that if the engine shifts or does anything, it's gonna cut the RPM signal and that cuts fuel and that cuts the body control module and just all kinds of other stuff and just kind of starts a huge mess of things that I just, I don't wanna do that. I just want it to work. Uh, but the bad thing is, is these are pretty much my only bolt holes that I have options for other than the, the alternator, which I would have to build some crazy contraption to do that or something like right here. So there's just not a lot of options. This was the easiest and that's why I did it. But uh, I don't know, sometimes your first idea isn't your greatest idea. So I was trying to redo it. Um, but for now, that's just gonna take too much time and I don't wanna make it and then have to remake it again later. So uh, for now, we're gonna move on to something else. All right guys, so another essential part of the operation is the drive shaft and this is the adapter that I bought. So as you guys know, this is the factory Mustang drive shaft thing, just because the transmission, the drive shaft is basically hard mounted to the tranny. So in order to add like a little bit of differential movement and all that stuff, this kind of goes in and out and it's kind of like a CV joint kind of wiggles. And um, so that's where this comes in. So th theoretically this should bolt to the diff flange right up here. So this should go right in there, I hope. Seems like it's gonna go. So yeah, that goes in there. And then this right here, this uh, this is a different uh, flange yoke that's actually gonna go on my drive shaft, should be the same size. I mean, it looks like it to me. And then basically what we do is we just shove the drive shaft in right here. Shove the drive shaft in and then pull it back and bam, we have a freaking drive shaft. So I think, I think my idea worked. This is the drive shaft out of my, uh, out of my S14. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in these bolts, which actually go to the, this little differential flange right here, which I'm really stoked on this thing. This is, this thing's a nice piece. So David didn't, uh, didn't have a chance to, uh, to make one because I basically just found this on the internet and I called him and I said, hey, I need that. And I had him, uh, I ordered it. 
and uh, and we got it. So it's here now. So now we just freaking stick it in. And as long as the flange, the yokes and everything change over perfect from my drive shaft, we're gonna have a freaking drive shaft. So another little update. Drive shaft. Bolts in. Look at that. Flange yoke. I got it changed over. It uh, took me a minute. I, I think I forgot how to do them, so I had to, especially the whole, using the whole hammer method. So I had to watch a YouTube video because I don't know what was wrong with my brain. I couldn't do it. But yeah, we got good engagement right there. We got a little bit of play. So uh, the next thing we got to do is uh, install my. Well, actually, test the shifter because I think we might have to pull the transmission back out of here. I ordered some clutch discs and uh, I want to replace the clutches, clutch discs just because it's been in my car for like four years or was in my drift car for four years, that transmission and clutch setup. And uh, everything looks good other than the discs were just a little bit worn. And I figured this car was gonna weigh a lot more and it has a 315 rear differential. So it's probably gonna see a couple more clutch kicks than, uh, than it did before. So. Uh, what we'll probably do is uh, end up having to tilt the engine back a little bit to pull the transmission, or we might just pull the whole swap out again, which I really don't want to do, but uh, we have to pull the, the whole uh, subframe cradle and all that stuff out anyhow. Uh, so I'm not going to officially bolt in the drive shaft. I just wanted to make sure that it hundred percent fit, but uh, she's looking really good and I'm pretty stoked about that. So uh, yeah, I guess we're going to, we're going to figure out something else to check off the list. We have the clutch pedal right here. I have some, some lines and fittings and stuff, and we need to be able to get that to hook up to the, the transmission, obviously, so we have a clutch. All right, so another cool little update that, uh, that took me a little bit longer than I thought. I was pretty frustrated, and I just wanted to burn this thing to the ground, but uh, we added, technically, a third pedal. So we have a clutch pedal now, but we, uh, we don't have a throttle pedal or a... Uh, a gas pedal so right here this is the factory gas pedal or whatever you want to call it but basically it is uh it's electronic so there's just some wires so this is drive-by wire and right here this is a uh, drive-by cable which is off of a 240sx um so i'm going to go ahead and see if i could figure out a way to kind of get this to work because the interesting thing is if you look right there that hole is actually a hole for a, a, a throttle cable to go through it's just a hole like directly behind um the electronic pedal right there it had a grommet in it i just pushed it out and there's only one company that makes a conversion pedal and it's like 200 and some bucks so i think we're gonna basically try to use one of these mounts uh, down here and then do something right here make some sort of little bracket and then run that over here to our uh, our throttle body. So the interesting thing about these two JVVTIs is it's actually electronic throttle body, so it's technically a drive-by wire, but it has the cable throttle out in here, and this has a TPS on it. So that's a throttle position sensor. Basically the same thing as this. This is just uh, throttle demand position, whatever you're inputting it in, and then it transfers that over to the electronic motor, and uh, and actually delivers that and it does have a like a a 10 percent uh if you go to 100 if you go to 90 percent and then push it down it'll do the remaining 10 percent mechanically um so there is ways around that there's there's like a kit that you could buy that, that that does it uh that turns it into a normal throttle body but i guess under full boost uh sometimes they like slap shut something like that i've heard i've heard uh, heard rumors but i've had really really good luck with this I have the same thing in my Supra. It's been in the drift car for four years and literally I can't tell that it's a uh, it's driver wire. It just does what you tell it to do. So that's what we're gonna be using in here. So I gotta go through a uh, little bit more diagnostic or testing theories on this to see see what we do and I'll, I'll let you guys know when I come up. All right, so I didn't update you guys earlier on uh, the shifter, 
but this is the shifter placement basically just right there dead center even which is uh, which is perfect and this is what i have to work with down here so you can see that's kind of going up through that factory hole right there ty could you pull it tight again yeah right there so then right now i don't have anything to mount off of and uh and that's kind of going to be the issue so uh so what I'm going to do is basically make a plate off of kind of that factory. Actually, no, I can't do that because this is in the way. So I, I, I basically need to make some sort of a plate like right here. And underneath all this carpet is this big old uh, thick piece of, uh, of sound deadening. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of cut that out. So I have something where I could either like weld something to or drill and bolt something or use like rib nuts or something. So. That, uh, that's kind of my dilemma now. That's gonna be a big pain and I'm not really looking forward to that, but it's one of them things where now we have a clutch pedal, now we have a drive shaft. If we don't have a throttle, you know, we can't do anything. And then obviously all the radiator and other stuff is, uh, is coming shortly after that. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get working on a little plate or trying to figure out some, some way of mounting that thing. All right guys, so this is what I came up with for my uh, 240SX throttle thing. So you can see it works. So we basically have a flange up there that we had to use. Uh, I used a nut insert on one side and the other side it kind of had like a little flange thing. But uh, basically bolted up there on the top to kind of keep the cable from coming through. And then we have it bolted right here to this piece of angle iron. Basically it's two pieces of angle iron, a little piece of square tubing. It's bolted right there on the corner and it's bolted right there on the corner. So carpet and everything is already cut everything is ready to go around it and uh, it feels pretty natural so it feels like it's pretty much in the stock position that's the i think the stock pedal is actually almost even over a little bit more but so uh that is our uh, our throttle cable and it goes full throttle no problem and uh now we have now we have a throttle cable because that was uh that was a pretty big stressor for me so we uh did we have a throttle cable now we have a uh, crank angle sensor basically on the engine kind of. Uh, I, I definitely want to modify it and actually put it on the engine, not on the subframe. I think that's a bad idea. Uh, so I'm going to fix that, but you know, we might get it running just how it is. But again, I'm waiting on uh, that whole pulley system to delete the AC and power steering. Um, the other thing, drive shaft works, shifter and everything. Did I show you guys a shifter? Hold on. Take a look at this. So, um, so now we have a brake pedal, a clutch pedal, a freaking shifter, okay, and uh, a throttle cable. So, throttle goes wide open, no problem. Uh, we don't have the clutch line and everything hooked up just yet because I have to hook up this, uh, this little piece right here. So this is a, a quick connect fitting right there, and then this goes to a, a braided line. And if we look up here in the engine bay, you'd actually see that's kind of what we're dealing with down there. So the other thing, there's like a little nipple that's supposed to come off the factory uh, brake system. And basically they, they share the brake fluid between the clutch and the, the clutch reservoir, or the brake fluid reservoir and the clutch. So that works. We got the throttle cable bracket and everything off of here. Obviously that was off of a 240SX and uh, made it up to that cable just fine. So uh, it's just kind of funny how 240SX is, you know, you just rub the parts and put them on everything else. Um, I spent a lot of money today on an angle kit and a headlight and some, uh, we figured this out. So we got this whole harness right here. This basically, I kind of pulled the, the wire back down, looped it around. And this goes to the alternator. So, uh, so we'll have a, an actual charging system on the car. Um, angle kit's coming. I have a bunch of stuff I need to do to the, to the rear diff and subframe and bushings and all kinds of crap back there. That's gonna be like an entire day, I feel like, messing with that. We have a hydro e-brake setup coming. Um, so lots and lots of things are happening. The other thing is we have a, uh, I basically convinced Dietrichs to send me the prototype from SEMA for their return style fuel system for this thing. So it's gonna have uh, dual uh, Dietrichworks 400s in a like a billet hanger, uh, and I'll be able to stage the pumps in and do all kinds of stuff like that. 
bunch of really, really cool stuff. Uh, I think this is going to be a super sick build. I think you guys are getting really excited about it. And I'm super excited about it too. Uh, if you missed the live stream yesterday, we announced the potential winner for the WRX. Uh, we did a little live stream. They still just have to confirm a couple eligibility things. Make sure that, you know, they make it, meet all the requirements. But uh, that was super cool to kind of do that. And uh, man, I'm just, I'm stoked for this whole Mustang journey. It's, uh, it's definitely stressful. We have less than, we have about nine, eight days now until we actually leave, like until we physically hop in the car and drive it to Texas uh, where we start the whole journey. So we have a 13 hour drive before we even get a drift to the first track. Um, but yeah, so appreciate you guys watching. Hit that thumbs up button if you like this thing. Tell your friends that, you know, the, the freaking crazy motion auto is swapping a 2J and a Mustang if you think it's cool. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.